Hello everybody, your professor is here. As always, I've got Spider-Man with me. The Avengers are looking above and I've got Martin Luther and John Wesley by my side. My name is Rex Butler and I am professor of church history at New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. And my task today is to review the syllabus for our class History of Christianity, Reformation to Modern. All right, this is for fall 2022, Monday afternoon, and this is the classroom flex format, which means that some of you will be keeping me company in the classroom. Thank you for joining me. But many of you will be uh, uh, attending the class through the Flex technology. And this year, for the first time, our Flex students will be able to use Blue Jeans technology uh, to interact live uh, and in real time. I'm so excited that I can see and hear you. You can see and hear me and your uh, uh, classmates. And so we'll have a more robust distance experience. Some of you will choose to watch the video lectures live at your convenience. But however it is that you participate in this class, here at NOBTS, we are doing all we can to create robust learning environments for our students. So let's review the syllabus. Here's my contact information. My email is the very best way to get in touch with me. I know that you can use uh, your Canvas uh, to contact me, but if you would, just use uh, your email to contact me at my email. It's easier for me to keep track of our correspondence, all right? So please, when you need to reach me, use my email address. You're always welcome to phone me and I have a new phone number. It's 504-816-8202. You're always welcome to call me. And then if you're on campus, I'm in the Dodd Building office number 105. All right, if you can't find the Dodd Building, you of course know where the level chapel is just follow that sidewalk to its end go through the gate and immediately to your right is the dodd building and i'm on the first floor would love to see you uh my door is almost always unlocked and i am here all right so please contact me uh, whenever i can help and as i often say don't wait until it's too late all right, here are the required textbooks for our class. First, Justo Gonzalez, The Story of Christianity, Volume 2, The Reformation to the Present Day. I always get good reviews about this textbook, and it was the textbook that I used when I first studied church history. It is one of the many reasons why I fell in love with church history, and so I hope you will feel that way about it too. It's called the story of Christianity because uh, Dr. Gonzalez tells it like a story. Uh, often I feel like I'm reading the script for a made for TV movie when I read uh, his textbook. So I hope that you will enjoy it. Another textbook is Documents of the Christian Church edited by Bettinson and Maunder. This is a reader and uh, we will use it to uh, uh, read primary sources written by the very people that we are studying about. And then also there will be additional required reading from primary sources that are available on the internet. All of these uh, reading requirements are listed in the back of your syllabus. All right, you can get your textbooks through uh, nobts.ecampus.com. 
All right, we are uh, using a new learning platform, Canvas. And so uh, you need to go online to your Canvas account. You are automatically enrolled and we will be learning this together. All right, but uh, I have uh, a, a good feeling about Canvas. Uh, it seems to be very uh, user friendly. And so, uh, and so we will uh, learn together about how to navigate the Canvas learning program. Now, uh, just a warning, uh, throughout this semester, I know that I'm going to say and write the word Blackboard, okay? Just forgive me. And if you hear or read Blackboard, just think Canvas and say, oh, poor Dr. Butler, he is an absent-minded professor. All right, Canvas is our new learning platform. All right, when you go to uh, Canvas, one of the first things I hope you'll do is look for an opportunity to introduce yourself. Uh, tell me information about who you are, where you're from, uh, what was your uh, uh, bachelor's degree in. Tell me about your job, your ministry. I would love to know about your ministry goal and especially what is the degree that you are pursuing. Uh, include a picture of you and your family or you doing your favorite activities. I would like to get to know you and pictures are a very helpful way. You can meet your professor. I've led the way with probably more information about myself than you want to know, but I will post pictures of my grandkids. And of course, you want to see pictures of my grandkids, I know. All right. Uh, Canvas uh, has a series of course modules and uh, the modules are outlined by units and uh, so you'll look for uh, PowerPoint video lectures, you'll look for uh, uh, bonus features, you'll look for uh, study guides that will help you prepare for your unit exams and your unit reading reports which will be conducted on Canvas. All right, your unit assignments. I've organized the course according to six units and uh, each unit has a deadline that's listed here uh, on screen and in your syllabus. At, the mi at midnight, at the end of each day, your unit exam and your reading report are due. And so mark your calendar for these important dates. And of course, I will be reminding you from week to week. Now, let's talk about the unit exams. There are six unit exams. You will take these closed book, closed note, open memory. All right, so this is the honor system. Uh, and maybe I should say this is the Holy Spirit system. And so you will be expected uh, to uh, to use your memory and use what you have learned uh, to fill out these exams and to complete them each unit. Uh, they are online. They last about 20 minutes. They are timed. They won't shut down. You will have uh, a few moments beyond the 20 minutes, uh, but uh, they are timed so that uh, you can be held accountable uh, for the time that you spend taking the exam. The base, po the base value of each exam is 25 points, but there are bonus questions that can increase the value of each exam. Now, listen to me. The word bonus comes from the Latin word for good. That means these bonus questions are good for you. They give you more opportunities to answer correctly and gain extra points. Some students feel that because there are more questions that I'm penalizing you. Not at all. The purpose is to give you opportunities to earn extra points and to do better on the exam and on your semester. So the lowest exam grade will be dropped. All right, if you uh, get caught by surprise and you just don't do well on an exam, don't worry about it. The lowest grade will be dropped. If you forget 
to take an exam, and this happens from time to time, don't worry about it, it will be dropped. If you have computer problems, uh, some kind of glitch, or if you go out of town for a revival or for a D now, you can drop that exam grade. And then at the end of the semester, if you're satisfied with your first five exam scores, well then you can exempt yourself from the sixth. All right. Now let's talk about reading reports. Again, your reading schedule is in the back of your syllabus and at the end of each unit uh, I want you to calculate what percentage of the reading did you complete. Now the easiest way to calculate this is to do all the reading therefore you can claim a hundred percent and you'll get five points for that reading report. If you didn't read quite all of the reading for that unit well then you enter in 80 percent and you get four points. Well uh, just over half well that's 60 percent or three points and so on all right but uh, please do your reading because uh, there's not a, enough in your uh, your PowerPoint lectures to communicate all that I want you to know about church history so please do the reading as well at the end of the semester you'll have an opportunity to post a bonus reading report and this is worth five points uh, if you have completed all of the assigned reading for the semester. Again, if you read it all, each unit, well then by the end of the semester, well, you can uh, submit your bonus reading report and earn your five points. Let's say you don't complete all of your reading for one unit or another, if you can catch up on the reading you missed, well then you uh, can uh, validly enter in the bonus reading report. And again, uh, all of this is on the honor system, the Holy Spirit system. Uh, so uh, uh, please uh, uh, listen to the Spirit as you fill out your unit exams and reading reports. Uh, from time to time, I hear from a student who has been convicted by the Holy Spirit that he or she has not been completely honest uh, in their online uh, exams and reports. So be careful and uh, we'll, we'll look forward to working through these exams and reading reports through the semester. All right, we have two reading assignments, two book reviews. The first book review is a review of a biography. So each student will read and review the biography of a subject located within the parameters of the Reformation and the modern church era uh, of, the, of the church. There are suggested biographies in the selected bibliography at the end of the syllabus. Other books are allowed with the permission of the professor, but I've listed a number of these and you can make your selection uh, under the uh, book review selection process that's, uh, that's on Canvas. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, the book review of the biography is due on September 19th. All right, a book review should be between six to eight double-spaced typewritten pages. That's uh, Times New Roman. This will be in your syllabus. And a book review will begin with a bibliographical entry at the top of the first text page of the review. Very simple, just like you would do a bibliographical entry. Uh, the name of the author, last name, first name, period. Then the title of the book uh, in italics, period. The publication information. It's very simple. That's really all that's required. And then your very first paragraph will be a brief biographical sketch of the author. Very brief. And then the majority of the book review will be a summary of the contents of the entire book. And then finally, I'm asking you to write an application point. An application point would be uh, how did this book about this person impact your own life and ministry, all right? 
Uh, and so we'll talk more about that as well. But that is how your book review will conclude is with an application point. I want you to, uh, to look for ways that church history can apply to your personal life and ministry. All right. The second book review is a review of a book written about a movement or event. Uh, also located in the parameters of the Reformation and modern era of the church. All right, so there are suggested books uh, included in the selected bibliography. So this is, uh, this is a book about a broader movement rather than just a single individual. And so this uh, book review is due on November the 14th. All right. It's time for me to put on my ugly face, all right, because I need to talk to you about penalties. There are expectations for this course, and I want to review them so you can know how to fulfill them. First of all is attendance. No student who misses more than nine classroom hours, for us that's three class meetings, can receive credit for this course. Three occasions of arriving late or leaving early will count as one absence. There's more information. You can see the online graduate catalog. All right, unit assignments, uh, the unit exams and the reading reports must be submitted by the date of the unit completion. All right, after the date of unit completion, listed in your syllabus, listed in that earlier slide, after that, the link will be uh, uh, deleted. It'll be removed. You will not have the opportunity to fulfill your exam and reading report after the due date. Please do not ask me to reopen an exam or reading report. I will not do it. Okay? But one unit exam will be dropped. All right? So uh, that's uh, something you need to keep in mind about the expectations of this class. Promptness. And that applies also to written assignments, all right? Uh, they will be assessed a 10% penalty if submitted after the deadline, all right? And then 20% penalty after five days, all right? So uh, assignments are due on a Monday, all right? If you don't get it in Monday by midnight, then there'll be a 10% penalty for a book review 60 points, that would be a six point penalty. After five days, that is after the following Saturday, it's 20% or 12 points. Now after one week, the penalty is severe, so severe that I cannot even speak the words. <sighs> Pretty bad. And no assignment will be accepted uh, beyond two weeks past the deadline. All right, now your professor is a wonderful, loving, caring person, but I am very particular about promptness with your written assignments. And so please uh, work ahead and get your assignments on time. All right, plagiarism. Uh, at New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, we hold students to a high standard of personal integrity. So any infraction of plagiarism will be reported to the Dean of Students and uh, the graduate catalog has more information, but we do not want to plagiarize. We want to be sure that when we turn in a written assignment that the words are our own or they are uh, very clearly marked by quotation marks and citations. All right, here is the grading scale. All right, I, uh, uh, I assign point values to every assignment and so you accumulate points with every assignment that you do. All right, so uh, with uh, six units of reading reports worth five points each, that's 30 points. But remember, you have an opportunity to gain even five more points on top of that through your bonus reading report. All right, the tests, uh, five will count, uh, each one with a base value of 25, but again, you can earn one, two, three or four extra points if you uh, answer the bonus questions, all right? So 
you have 125, possibly even more points to earn with the unit tests. All right, the first book review, 60 points. The second one is 60 points. So there's a total base value of 275 points. To get an A, 255 to 275 points. A B is 230 points to 254. C is 210 to 229 and so on. Now, if you score 164 points or less, well, that is a failing grade. Now, I'm going to make a prediction. Half of you are going to make A's in this class. Out of the other half, most will make B's. There will be a few C's, a few D's, but if you want to fail my course, you have to work very hard to do that. It means you didn't turn in your work, or you turned it in late, or you plagiarized, or you exceeded the uh, allotted number of uh, absences. Uh, if you do your work, you will pass this class. And if you do it well, you'll make an A, all right? And half of you or more will do that. All right, let us me talk to the NOLA to You Flex students, all right? Y'all are required to be in class either through viewing the lectures live, and what a great experience that will be, from your own desk uh, or from your own phone, uh, you can interact live with your professor and fellow students, or you can view the recorded lectures later on Canvas. Now, you will be asked to certify that you have been present either for the live session or have viewed the recording session. And this certification will be done through a keyword, which I will announce every week. Flex students will send the keyword to my Flex assistant, who is Cole McQuitty. And you see his email address there. It is in the syllabus. And so when you send that keyword in, you will be counted present for that session. Now, all video lectures are available for seven days after the video is posted. So, you have only a one-week window in which to sit down and watch that video. If you are unable to view that video uh, within that time frame, you will be considered absent. Okay, and remember, only three absences. Uh, technical issues will not be considered a valid reason for missing a lecture, which means that you probably need to not wait until the seventh day, uh, the twelfth hour, uh, to uh, to listen to it. All right, you need to uh, sit down and uh, access the video early enough that if you have a technical issue, you can. Uh, find a way to circumvent it, all right? Because technical issues will not be a reason for missing the lecture. And again, you're allowed to miss three lectures. That's according to the NOBTS attendance policy. All right, if you're in the classroom, turn off your cell phones, put them away. Please give me your attention and uh, your classmates uh, the attention. This is courtesy, all right? Use your laptops for purposes suitable for this class only. And I hate to use the H word, oh no, but uh, this is the fall season and uh, so there's opportunities for emergencies. In that case, you will uh, evacuate or from wherever you are, you will go to the seminary website for information related to the seminary. That's nobts.edu. Or you'll check Canvas for instructions related to this class, okay? All right, that uh, brings us to the end of the syllabus. I hope all has been clear. Uh, every week, I will be opening the class time with more instructions, reminders about assignments, and of course, I'm always available to you uh, to help you with information uh, or encouragement. So please feel free to be in touch with me at any time. All right, looking forward to our class together. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.